Good morning. Continuing in Hebrews 1, we pick up in verse 3. Speaking of Jesus, as we consider uh, who He is in light of Solus Christus, He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature, and He upholds the universe by the word of His power. And then we move a little bit. We, we've seen Him as prophet, and, and now we are going to see Him as priest. After making purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. I want to focus on that first clause. After making purification for sins. One of the things that makes for the doctrine uh, of the Reformation doctrine of solus Christus, Christ alone, is the uniqueness of his priestly work. All the priests, Hebrews tells us, of the Old Testament amassed sacrifice upon sacrifice upon sacrifice. And those sacrifices were ultimately uh, and collectively unable to deal with all of the sins of humanity. That's one of the reasons why they had to be continually offered. One sacrifice wasn't sufficient, and so there was a continuation, a continuation, and a continuation. The author of Hebrews makes an elaborate argument about the nature of Jesus and his sacrifice and his priestly work as greater than the work of the high priest, as um, more exhaustive than the repetitive sacrifices, and certainly more final than any of those, and even those collectively. Consider Hebrews 10, verse 11 through 14. And every priest stands daily at his service offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, many versus single, he sat down at the right hand of God, that place of favor and exaltation and power, waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. It's quoting Psalm 110 verse 1. For by a single offering he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. It is, he, the author is speaking of the power, efficacy, and magnanimous nature of the sacrifice of Jesus. So when we read here this priestly descriptor in the beginning of verse, uh, or I'm sorry, in the latter portion of verse 3, after making purification for sins, we understand that in this little precis about Jesus is embedded the power of his priestly work. So when the reformers came to this doctrine, they understood that there was a priesthood afforded to believers that was born out of the great high priestly work of Jesus. That is to say, I have a priestly opportunity to go to God, but why? Because I have a priest. I have an eternal priest. I have uh, an infinite priest. I have an ultimate priest. It's not that I have no priest. It's that I have a priest who speaks forever, and I don't need another priest. And the Reformers recognized that, and they recognized that their priest was solus Christus, Christ alone. May the Lord encourage you today as you go to your priest who takes you to your Father.